So this is a short video on lice and mites. Um, <clears throat> these are insects that um, that live in or on us. Uh, so we'll we'll start with with mites. There's a lot of different types of mites in the in the world. Uh, there are, and most of them eat dead skin cells. Dust mites that live in your house is what prevents us from um, being up to our ass in dead skin cells. They, they, they eat it. Um, but there's a type of mite, the scabies mite, uh, that actually goes right to the source. Uh, instead of waiting for us to shed skin, it just goes to the, the skin. Uh, and what happens with these little animals, they're little microscopic insects, when they get on you, they burrow underneath the skin. Uh, and then they lay eggs, and there will be larvae that, that grow uh, in the skin. And it, it's the female mites that, that do this. Um, I'm not certain if the male mites even get on you, but uh, the lesions uh, are called scabies. And really, it's not the damage that's being done by the, by the mite uh, to the skin. It's the fact that their wastes are irritating and cause inflammation. So what happens is they, uh, they end up burrowing these tunnels. And usually there's a little vesicle at the end. There's like a little um, blister almost, uh, a little pimple at the end of this tunnel that they've they dug uh, and that tunnel gets all inflamed because of the wastes of, uh, because of the poop from the uh, from the mite this is a photograph of one uh, very very small uh, see-through sort of things and they just eat the keratin so this is a particularly bad case of of it uh, and you'll notice that it's on the hands and wrist, uh, up in between the fingers, and and the little vesicles are where the mite is currently living, uh, and the inflammation grows up around that. Um, so uh, they spread really rapidly. Uh, from skin to skin contact, which is uh, particularly fearful for our work. Um, but they can also go through clothing, linens, uh, shared towels, things like that. They, they are insects, they're free living insects, so they can live off, -site, off the host for quite some time. They don't need to always be eating. Um, it often will spread through families like once you get them in the house then the whole household it gets it it's a big thing for uh, nursing homes and and that kind of thing um, that that becomes irritating now something that's that's interesting uh, is you get these trails left in the skin uh, and it, it happens in skin folds like in the, the belly button in the umbilicus uh, around the crotch, uh, in, in armpits, uh, between fingers uh, are common. Uh, for some reason, around nipples seems to uh, be a place that they, they like. Um, so, so what happens is the, the inflammation in that skin causes just this terrible intense paritis like this horrible itch and it, apparently it's worse at night I guess when, when you're not um, thinking about something else but it, but it doesn't happen right away it sometimes can be like two months after you've contacted the mite I, like the, what has to happen is you, you get them and then they have to colonize and reproduce and burrow and and 
accumulate enough waste product. It, it says in your textbook on page 209 uh, that the itching and inflammatory response doesn't occur for approximately 30 to 60 days after that initial contact, which makes it very difficult uh, to isolate where you got it. Uh, like who can remember everything that you touched at the beginning of August? Like it's, um, yeah, it's a, it can be a long time. Uh, so you've got to make sure that it is, uh, there's, uh, they can actually just take a scalpel and open up that little vesicle. And if they find the mite in it, uh, then that's a sure sign that it's a mite. Uh, most of the time they don't waste too much time with diagnosis. They just go directly to, uh, to treatment. It's a presumptive diagnosis. It's called it, uh, a clinical trial. It's, it, it's like, okay, this is looking like mites. Let's give this pesticidal soap. Uh, and if it works, that's what it was. And if it doesn't work, we'll reevaluate and look at something else. Um, you know, is it a, just a, a dermatitis? Is it a contact dermatitis or something? So, uh, the big thing is this scabicide soap uh, or cream, sometimes a lotion. Uh, and you want to put it everywhere and, and use it everywhere. Um, because one of the problems is that you can clear up where they've been the longest, but that doesn't get rid of colonies that are establishing elsewhere in your body, just from contact with your own self. Um, you got to really be careful with linens, towels, uh, but more importantly, um, furniture that has the, that has material on it, car seats, that kind of thing can be a, a real problem. Now they don't live, uh, below freezing. So apparently according to, uh, according to, um, the Red Cross, who, who we called, uh, put everything upholstered outside in the winter for, uh, for a couple of hours and the mites on it won't survive. Uh, so that's, that's a quick and clean way of, of dealing with it. If you happen to get the infestation at, you know, January, February sort of thing. Um, It's contagious, uh, so it's contraindicated uh, to be dealing with these people. You don't want to, you don't want it on your linens. You don't want it on you, uh, especially. Uh, and you can spread it because you, because if you have them, you will be contagious a long time before you even know you have them. Um, so that's scabies, and and mites. Lice uh, really have uh, a very limited range. So there are lice on most mammals, uh, and you know, but they don't inf infest each other. So, so uh, Pediculus humanus capitis are lice that infect human scalp. Hair. Um, and that's it. And they crawl around, they don't have wings, uh, and you probably have seen them. Like this is the, the uh, ubiquitous cooties. Um, they live in your, in your hair and your head, and they suck blood from the scalp. Now, they don't, they're not very big, so they don't make big bites. <clears throat> and they don't have a proboscis like a mosquito where they can they can dip down uh, in so they they just try and get a little bit of blood right from the surface but incisions that small uh, clot up very quickly so what they they have is 
an anticoagulant substance in their saliva. And so when they bite, they put saliva into the wound to keep the blood flowing to stop uh, platelets from activating and, and, and coagulation. And it's the saliva itself that's, that's irritating. Uh, not, it's not the bite, it, it's, the, it's the inflammation caused by the saliva. And then what they do with the protein that they get out of your blood is they lay eggs, and they lay eggs and glue them to your hair. And the eggs are called nits. Um, so uh, they spread from person to person by, by brushing hair uh, against one another, sharing hats, helmets. They can get on upholstery and, and car seats, but that's, that's not as likely. They, they do live for some time off the host, but they're, they're not, um, they're not very quick. We, we have this idea that they jump. That's fleas that jump. Uh, uh, lice just crawl. Uh, so they're, they're fairly slow. Um, they, um, they look like this. I don't know why this one they don't have a photograph. There should be no lack of photographs for, for head lice. Uh, they seem to be everywhere. They, they become endemic in schools. Uh, they, they seem to be with kids just because of the close proximity kids are, are with each other and the fact that they will share hats and they don't pay attention to that kind of stuff is more common. Um, so, so what happens is the, it gets itchy, and and some people will actually feel the movement on the on the scalp. Generally, they're found by examination, just by you know, check your kids for uh, for lice. I mean, when both of my kids have had it just once, but both were. We got a notice from the school saying a, a child in your child's class has been diagnosed with lice. Uh, please check. And sure enough, there was. Now, um, a lot of people think that you can just go go to the um, store and buy the colada or, or one of those uh, shampoos and, and deal with it. Um, that works for the adults, but it doesn't work usually for the for the nits for the eggs, um, and so what you have to do is you have to get those those nits off, and I mean if you go on the internet, there's all kinds of recipes using like olive oil and vinegar or, and things like that that basically make the nits the glue that the nit is glued to the hair with soften and so that the then it can be removed and you really have to to pick them off and that's why it's called nitpicking it's a tedious little uh little thing some of the there are knit combs they're very fine tooth combs that do work but you have to be meticulous about getting all the hair because if you miss even just a few then when they hatch you'll just get reinfested Excuse me. Um, that's one of the problems that, that happens is that, um, you know, kids go home from school, they have lice, the parents don't adequately get rid of the nits, and the same kid has lice again. And, you know, uh, it can, you know, it's a tedious, time consuming thing to get rid of. It's, um, it's a fallacy that uh, that it's dirty kids that get it. Um, it's it's actually they like clean hair. Uh, the the nits actually glue better to to clean hair. Uh, hairspray actually makes it difficult for them. Uh, so uh, there's a lot of a lot of grade twos and threes going to school probably right about now in the fall when as hats are becoming common to um, that are going to school with their hair up or in hairspray uh, that kind of thing
Uh, the nits look like this. Uh, they're just small little bumps glued to the shaft of the hair and they have to be picked out. Uh, a funny story, my uh, guy that used to work at my office, <coughs> a kinesiologist, uh, he married to a, a girl from the Philippines. Uh, they met while he was working in the Philippines. And um, so one of his kids was born in Japan, but the other two were born here in Barrie. And uh, they ended up, all three of them ended up with uh, lice. They found it again from an infestation at their school. And he, and. Bill was like, oh my God, the, the kids have got lice, we've got to do something about it. And his wife was like, well, uh, where do we find a monkey man? And he didn't know what, what she was talking about. And it, it turns out that in the Philippines, uh, there are people that have monkeys that groom. Uh, Monkeys naturally just groom each other. When you see monkeys picking at each other, they're they're in grooming each other. They're picking nits. They're getting rid of lice. So apparently, what what you do is you bring your kid to the monkey man, and this little trained monkey sits on the kid's shoulder and goes hair by hair, picking the nits. Uh, uh, apparently, it's a lot less tedious to have a monkey do it than you do it yourself. Uh, and she was quite disappointed, apparently, that there's nobody with monkeys offering that service uh, in Barrie. So the, the pesticidal shampoos uh, work to a certain extent. Uh, there's some resistance uh, to developing in those lice. Uh, because what you're doing is you're killing the weak ones and the strong ones are the ones that are reproducing. Um, and it's from people not following the directions closely, really. Um, you can smother it with, with oils. Like a big thing is olive oil and vinegar, it seems to, in, in a shower cap, seems to work fairly well. Um, I Modified hair dryer is news to me. I've never heard of this, but you have to, to, to get rid of the nits. A common source of reinfestation reinf is bedding and towels and hats and hairbrushes and things. Um, you know, upholstered furniture. If your kid's been sitting on the couch playing Xbox every day and his head's against the back of the couch, then it's just as likely that there are lice living in the couch. Um, So they should that should be covered until uh, those lice haven't had a chance to get on anybody and, and reproduce. Now, body lice is is a different sp species. It's uh, Pediculus humanus humanus. Uh, it's related to head lice, but they have different patterns. Uh, they they don't actually stay on on the host, they stay in the host's clothing and they just leave the clothing to, to bite you. So, so what happens is, is clothing gets infested because uh, there's usually hair on the body is usually too sparse for them um, to, to be uh, there. Um, this is why you don't share unwashed clothing. Uh, <clears throat> makes me always think twice at about this time of year when, I'm, when I've done this class, I always think twice about trying on clothes at the mall, uh, but whatever. Uh, it's, you get an itchy rash uh, from it and it's, yeah. And just keep your clothes clean and don't share them. Uh, it seems to, seems to work. Pubic lice are also called crabs. Uh, they were probably a more of a scourge uh, in the 80s and earlier when uh, people had more pubic hair than is fashionable today. But 
nevertheless. They live in any coarse body hair. So it's not just the pubic hair, but, you know, coarse hair, you know, in the lower abdomen, on the upper legs, that kind of thing. Um, they, the most common way that they spread is through sexual contact. Uh, and they just cause an intense itching. itching. Um, the, uh, and the same thing applies. Like you, you can use colada, the uh, pesticidal soaps, uh, to get rid of them. But uh, you have to get rid of the nits. Uh, so shaving is probably the, the least tedious way of... Uh, of getting rid of them, not giving them any place to, to lay their eggs. Um, and, uh, there was a, a comedy troupe in, in the seventies and eighties that, uh, called McLean and McLean. And they wrote a song called Papillon d'Amour, which is the butterflies of love. And it was a song about pubic lice. I don't know if it's on YouTube, but you probably could find Papillon d'Amour. Um, kind of a horrible photograph of a pubic lice blouse. That's, uh, that's what they look like. They're extremely small. Uh, you'll notice that their bodies are more rounded. They look more like a tick than, uh, than, uh, a hair head louse. Uh, so, uh, you treat them with pesticidal soaps. I, isolate sheets etc now there are other insects that can like ticks and mosquitoes and and things uh that uh black flies that really are parasitic infections they feed off you but they don't stay on you uh so we don't really consider them as uh, an infection we just consider them more of a pest um and we can probably put like leeches and and those sorts of animals into the uh, into the same category, and oftentimes like if you get a leech on you, you'll get inflammation at the site that the leech was attached, and um, um, you know, so fleas and mosquitoes and all of those sorts of things are are not considered parasitic infections. They're mostly just considered. Uh, attacks rather than an infection.